Hi everyone, welcome to another video on AWS Lambda. In this video, we are going to talk about environment variables. Uh, what are they, uh, why we use them, uh, how we can encrypt them, and so on. As usual, we'll start with what. So what are environment variables? So they are nothing but predetermined values that lets you configure some of the portion of your code without having to change it. Uh, one of the simplest example would be you can connect to multiple different database with the same code without having to change anything in your code. So that would be some of the most common use case of environment variables. Uh, now the question is why uh, we would uh, use environment variables. The first advantage is configuration flexibility. It gives you flexibility so that uh, you can configure applications without hard coding values into your code. So for example, if you want to connect to a database, so you don't have to hard code the value of your username, your password, your database, or your host. You can simply store them in environment variables and based on which uh, database you are trying to connect, uh, it, your code will be able to get those values for those specific environment. The next advantage is portability meaning when you are using environment variable you can make your application more portable across different environments so for example if you are, let's say you are working with some file and when you are working locally you might have that file in a different place but when you are working in a production environment you might have the same file but in a different location so instead of having code to uh, handle those two different location what you can do is you can have a same code but instead of having the, let's say, path of that file hard-coded, you store that value in environment variable. So for your uh, local environment, you have a different value in that environment variable. And when you are working in a production environment, you have a different value, which is suitable for that production environment. The third point is security. Information uh, such as, let's say, API keys or passwords or database Credentials, you don't want to leave them exposed in your code. So what you want to do is you want to store them in environment variable so that no one can see them except you. The last one is separation of concern. Uh, so environment variables allows you to separate configuration from your code, promoting a cleaner code base and making it easier to manage application settings separately from application logic. So for example, you want to fetch something from your database, that is your application logic. but uh, you want to connect to different database, so that becomes your application settings, meaning when you are working locally, you want to connect to a local database. When you are working in a production environment, you want to connect to a production database. So in, in that in that case, you, are, you want to have a single code base, which is responsible for fetching all those data, but at the same time, you want to have flexibility so that you can connect to any given database without having to change your code. With basics out of the way, let's see how we can actually use them in our Lambda function. Here is my Lambda function. And as you can see, this is very uh, basic code. This is only for demonstration purpose. And I'm only showing how you can create environment variables, how you can use them, and basically how you can fetch them. But it is up to you to use however you want. So here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a connection string using username, password, database, and host. And as you can see, uh, I have all these values hard-coded, which is very bad practice. So what you want to do is you want to actually uh, replace these hard-coded values with some environment variables. And to create environment variables in Lambda function is very easy. Uh, you, all you need to do is go in your configuration section, and you have this environment variable section here. So once you click on edit, now you can add as many environment variables as you want. So in my case, I'm working with uh, username. So I will replace the hard coded with my environment variable username. I'll name it, let's say my user. I will create another one uh, that is password and the value will be my password. Uh, let's create another one. This is database and the name of my database will be let's say test and the last one was host so i'll name it localhost cool with this now i have four environment variables username password database and host now i will save it so now let's go back to our code 
and what we are going to do is we are going to replace these hard-coded values with our environment variable so do that to do that it's uh, really simple uh, I'll import OS and from there I can access these environment variables so I will replace these hard-coded values with os.environment and dot .get I will provide the name of my environment variable which is username I will do the same for rest of the code I already have this code snippet in my repository I will uh, provide the link for this uh, in the video in the description uh, so you can copy it and what I will do is I will basically paste it here so as you can see uh, previously I had hard-coded values and now I have uh, now I am fetching those values from the environment variable so only this part of your code will be in your repository and not the environment variables so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy it and I will again run the test so as you can see the body is still the same I'm still able to connect to the DB and the name of my DB was test and the host was localhost the name of my user was my user and password was my password so now what we have done is we basically replaced hard-coded values with some environment variables so now our code is able to uh, let's say communicate with any database in any environment and we can e easily do that we don't have to change any part of our code and this will work in all the environments that you have there is still one problem here and the problem is that even though I don't have hard-coded values in the code I can still see all of my environment variables in this environment variable section so anyone who has access to, even the read access to this lambda function can basically uh, see all of my environment variables can see all of my credentials so what lambda function allows you or let's say gives you ability to do is that it, it lets you encrypt these environment variables so that no one can uh, see these environment variables so even if they have access to your lambda function when they will visit this environment variable section they won't be able to see the actual value what they will see is an encrypted value so let's see how we can do that so to uh, create encrypted uh, variables the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a key let's go to key management console key management service is basically a service for creating keys for encryption and decryption purpose uh, we will create a key and we will click on next uh, let's uh, provide the name for the key I'll name it uh, lambda key let's say lambda environment encryption you can name it whatever you want and the description I'm using this key for encrypting my environment variables click on next uh, click on next so uh, once we are creating this key uh, we need to provide the permission for whoever can access this this specific key so in our case uh, we want our lambda function to use that key and encrypt these values so when whenever we are creating our lambda function if you go in this general configuration section uh, sorry not general in the permissions so you can see that uh, every lambda function is assigned a role this is the role that is assigned to this lambda function and this role has uh, let's say a set of permissions and so in our case we want to make sure that this lambda function has permission to the key that we just created so that this lambda function will be able to access it so what we'll do is we'll uh, search for this role and the name of this role is working with environment variable so in our key management console here we can search for it working with so what we are basically doing here is we are providing the permission of this key to our lambda function so with this we'll click on next and finish so now we have this key uh, lambda environment encryption key and now what we'll do is 
uh, we'll go back to our environment variable section and here we'll click on edit and what we'll do is we have this encryption configuration here we'll click on it and we can click on this enable helpers for encryption in transit what this does is it basically allows you to encrypt the values here and we'll use a customer master key meaning the key that we just created and the name was lambda environment encryption key and let's encrypt all these values here let's start with database uh, the name was lambda environment encryption key we we'll click on encrypt uh, we'll do the same for rest of the environment variables encrypt 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 so we will save it and now as you can see even if anyone has access to this lambda function when they visit our environment variable section they cannot uh, see the actual value of our environment variables all they can see is this encrypted value now that we have uh, in encrypted environment variables uh, let's go back to our code and run it again so let's go in the lambda function and run it so as you can see we did run and the problem is that uh, we are getting the encrypted values instead of actual ones so so the reason is uh, lambda function is not responsible for decrypting the encrypted values uh, we have to do it ourselves although uh, lambda function does give you the code snippet to do it so you you don't have to figure it out yourself um, it's pretty simple let's go in our environment variable section let's click on edit and uh, let's click on enable helpers and here if you click on encrypt you have this decrypt secrets snippet and if you click on it it will give you basically the code snippet that lets you decrypt your uh, decrypt your environment variables which you encrypted earlier and if you look at the code uh, first thing it is doing is uh, it is fetching the encrypted value from environment and then it is using this boto3 library and uh, calling the decrypt function and in here it is passing this uh, encrypted value and along with it this is also passing one additional parameter and here uh, it is passing this lambda function name but if you look at it it is uh, trying to get this value from os.environment but if we go back to our environment uh, section we didn't create this uh, environment variable so the thing is when we are creating this lambda function so lambda function automatically adds one in let's say a couple of environment variables and one of them is this one aws lambda function name so you don't have to do it yourself lambda is doing this for you and that's it so this is uh, a code snippet that lets you decrypt your encrypted values so what i have done is i have uh, created this snippet for me so that i don't have to write it again so if you go in my github repository i will add the link in the description uh, i have this environment variable folder and inside this i have this file encrypted variable and this has the code snippet for fetching the encrypted value from environment variable and then decrypting it so let's copy it and let's paste it in our lambda function let's go to lambda function in the code section we will replace this okay so if you look at this lambda handler function the only thing that i have done is i have added this uh, function call to decrypt meaning first i am fetching the encrypted value from environment and then passing this as a parameter to my decrypt function which i created so this is the decrypt function that i created and what i am doing is i am passing the parameter uh, encrypted key and inside it what i am doing is i am using the same code that was provided by the snippet and i am decrypting it but i'm doing some additional things here as well so if you look at it i have created this global variable called uh, decrypted keys and what i'm doing is i'm once i have decrypted the key i am adding that key in this dictionary the reason i'm doing it uh, is because when i'm uh, running this lambda function let's say uh, very frequently in that case uh, whatever we store in a global variable is still stays there the reason is that the process which is running this lambda function still remains alive for i think 10 or 15 minutes 
and so let's say if i run this lambda function now and then after 20 or 30 minutes if i run it this global variable will be emptied out because in that duration the lambda or basically aws uh, deletes all of your process related to your lambda function but if if i invoke this function let's say in a matter of few seconds then i will still have all the environment all the global values that i have stored so what i'm doing is i'm uh, basically trying to use the cache in a sense that when I'm trying to decrypt any key, first thing I'm doing is I'm looking it inside the dictionary. If I find it here, I simply return it from here. I don't go and decrypt the values because I already have it here. And for some reason, if I don't find this value in my dictionary, then only I'm decrypting it. And after decrypting, I'm again adding this value in my dictionary. So the next time I'm invoking this function, first thing it will look is it will try to uh, search for this key in my dictionary and if it finds one it will simply return it from here it won't have to decrypt the key again okay so with that now let's uh, run our lambda function um, okay the problem is I didn't deploy the change meaning I uh, replaced my previous code with new one but I have not deployed it so as you can see here change is not deployed so let's deploy it and once it is deployed I'll click on test and this time as you can see I don't have encrypted value anymore I can see the actual values test localhost my user my password so if you look at the print statements that I added you can see decrypting key decrypting key decrypting key and another decrypting key so if I go back to my code what I'm doing is I'm looking for the decrypted key inside the dictionary since this is the first time I invoked this function my dictionary is empty and I don't have anything here so it didn't find it in the dictionary so what it did was it printed this line and then decrypted the, this key and then added this in the dictionary so because I have four environment variables I can see four print statements because I made four uh, function call to this method and now if I were to again rerun this function this time as you can see I, I get this message which is found decrypted key in cache fetching decrypted key from the cache so I have uh, created this dictionary which is acting as a cache and you can see this is the print statement that was uh, in the uh, output console so in this case because we already decrypted these keys earlier and I already added those decrypted keys inside this dictionary I don't have to decrypt them again I can simply uh, fetch it from this dictionary and this is how uh, we can work with uh, encrypted environment variables so in this video uh, we have covered first uh, how to replace our hard-coded values with environment variables then we saw how we can uh, create environment variables in lambda function and then how we can uh, encrypt those environment variables and finally how we can decrypt them and use it however we want we want this is it for this video if you have any questions any queries you can write them in the comment section and i will try to answer them